Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 181 we'll take a look at feasibility and questioning requirements. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday at my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. In Chapter 4 of our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, uh, Neil Ford and I wrote about architectural characteristics. Now, architectural characteristics are what some people call uh, non-functional requirements, uh, NFRs, uh, the illities of architecture, and also system quality attributes. I don't care for any of those phrases. I really like the term architecture characteristics, and there are a lot of them. Uh, things like um, scalability, performance, reliability, fault tolerance, uh, these are good examples of what I'm referring to as an architectural characteristic. But there's one in particular I want to focus on. You see, most of the time, when we think about architectural characteristics and architecture, we think about the operational characteristics that are very common. Uh, systems that need to scale. Maybe we have to support high levels of availability. Uh, maybe it's fault tolerance, uh, responsiveness, performance, elasticity. Uh, these are all a group of what are called operational characteristics. But what I want to focus on in this lesson is a different kind of architecture characteristic, a different kind of ability. Uh, let's say that our business sponsor or product owner says, we have a very tight time frame and a very tight budget for this project. Well, I know this is probably hypothetical. <laughs> We've never heard this before, uh, but this is in fact an architectural characteristic. And it is one of my favorite characteristics. It happens to be feasibility, the actual topic of today's lesson. Now, to describe feasibility, let me tell you a little story. And it's the story of the F-16 fighter. When the United States, back a long time ago, wanted to design the F-16 fighter jet, they contracted with a design team um, led by a gentleman named Henry Hilliker. Now, the Air Force, the United States Air Force, only had two requirements. They said that this aircraft had to be lightweight and exceed speeds of Mach 2.5 or higher. Well, the design team went to work, but whatever they did, they could not meet those requirements. It just wasn't feasible. Uh, due to the lightweight metal composites and the high thrust to weight ratio to bring that aircraft to two and a half times the speed of sound, Mach 2.5, caused all those lightweight metal components to just simply fall apart. I mean, things were flying off of this plane. Uh, when they added heavier composite metals to construct this plane, uh, it, it never reached even close to 2.5 Mach. Well, this did not seem like a solvable problem. It wasn't feasible. So what did the design team do? Henry Hilliker went back to the Air Force and said, um, this does not seem feasible. Uh, why do you need such a fast aircraft? Oh, said the United States Air Force, well, this is a very expensive aircraft, billions of dollars. Uh, if it gets into trouble in a dogfight, we want it to get out of there right away. Oh, said Henry. So the design team went back and designed this aircraft, arguably one of the best fighter aircrafts of that time. Now it's interesting. The aircraft didn't reach speeds of Mach 2.5. No, what the design team focused on was acceleration and maneuverability because that's how you escape combat. You see, the moral of this story is that what requirements the U.S. Air Force gave the design team were not feasible. But in fact, they really weren't requirements, were they? No, 
They were a solution. By digging further and asking that why question, the design team was able to find out what the real requirement of this aircraft was, to be able to escape combat if it got into trouble. High speed does not do that. High acceleration and maneuverability do. Well, let's take a look at our industry. Suppose your product owner says this, we require five nines of availability. Now, that is 99.999% availability for the new customer ordering system. And if we take a quick look at a, a quick Google search, uh, we find that five nines of a percentage of uptime right here in the, in the arrow is actually equivalent um, per year of only five minutes and 35 seconds of downtime per year, which averages to about one second a day out of a 24-hour day of unplanned downtime. Well, what do you suppose the <clears throat> response is from the architect? Uh, the architect says, well, now that's simply not feasible <laughs> given our budget and time constraints. We, we, we just can't do that. Again, that word feasibility, that illity, comes up. So, to solve or resolve this problem, we do the same thing the design team did with the F-16 fighter. We ask, why, wait, wait, why do you need five nines of availability? And it turns out the response from the product group is, oh, well, we need to make sure our customers can always place an order 24-7. That's what we need. Oh, says the architect. Well, wait, just like the design team, the architect says, oh, I can make that happen. And sure enough, here is the architecture using microservices for that order system. And notice we have customer operations and a whole lot of services. We have shipping operations. We have order processing operations to do the pick and pack and all the order processing stuff and returns. And, and then we also have payment operations to pay with different kinds of means, maybe a credit card or a gift card and also returns and credits and all of that. Well, is it interesting? Turns out this architect can make that feasible. How? Because of the requirement. You see, customers must be able to always place an order. That has to have high availability, five nines. But all the rest of the processing can have standard three nines commodity-based availability. This divide and conquer made that requirement feasible. But I want to come back for a moment and actually analyze these two, quote, requirements. So the product team says, we require, meaning it's a requirement, five nines of availability for the new customer ordering system. But when we asked why, what was the reason? You see, because this is really a solution. The reason was we need to make sure our customers can always place an order. That's the requirement. And you see, this happens to us all the time. We receive, quote, requirements from the product team and our product partners and our customers. But it's our job as an architect to dig deeper, especially if it does not seem feasible, and really find out why a certain thing is needed. That why question, just continually drilling down to that why, uncovers the true requirements that make a solution feasible. So this has been lesson 181. Um, one of my favorite architecture characteristics, feasibility, and just about really questioning some of the requirements to make sure that they are requirements and really not a solution. That's our job as architects to come up with that. So stay tuned in uh, two more weeks for yet another lesson in Software Architecture Monday. And, and thanks for listening.